On the left, Alfred Eisenstadt, Eisy, the dean of photojournalists, one of the original Life magazine photographers. On the right, John Lowengard, former staff photographer and picture editor at Life. Together, these men have witnessed and photographed many of the important events and personalities of the 20th century and have had a profound effect on the course of photojournalism. Today, Lowengard's assignment is to illustrate a People magazine article on Eisy. It's the latest assignment in a career that began in 1956, while Lowengard was an undergraduate at Harvard. Pictures under discussion. Lowengard's new book collects three decades of great shots. The thing that life had for a long time, from 1936 onward, maybe 20 years, was a wonderful relationship with radio. Radio told everybody in the country what the story was, what was going on, what the news was, but it didn't have any pictures. And newspapers at that time didn't have very good pictures. And so life came along every week with this kind of engine in the front of the magazine that was the news and pictures. It didn't cover everything. It was selective. It was imaginative. It could do things in its own way. But it was, there was in every issue the news and pictures. And in the late 50s, radio got pictures. It's what happened. And life started losing an edge that every issue had contained. Uh, and all through the 60s, there were considerable problems about trying to keep up with the news, trying to do the news on a weekly basis and have it interesting to readers seven days later. Although I've been taking pictures for the last 15 years, I've been the picture editor of life, and, and that's like fascinating, and I was the first picture editor of people. I mean, it's very interesting to work on that side of magazines and work with photographers. See what photographers do. You learn they make the same stupid mistakes you make. It's wonderful. I mean, you're not the only person who goofed up in the world. But it's been very interesting, Isaac, can you bring although I've taken pictures, to go back full time to taking oh, pictures is sort of like Rip Van Winkle. About a year and a half ago, I bought new right, cameras with motors well. and exposure meters in them. I mean, it was just wonderful world of, uh, I mean, photography has become so easy. And now I really have to go into lighting equipment. And I've been talking to all my colleagues and everybody I can buttonhole one day in the life of Spain, a hundred photographers I asked. 25 of them or so, what lights they use. And um, it, it's really remarkable. When I stopped, the last pair of lights I had weighed about 35 pounds, and now they weigh about seven pounds. It's just sensational. The world has become very easy. Of course, the trouble is it's easy for everybody, so the competition has become very intense. It's very easy to make a photograph. It's very hard to make a good photograph. And uh, you know exactly what makes a photograph good who knows except that what makes a photograph good is the response that people have to that photograph. I mean, that's what you're talking about. Making a photograph that people can respond to is terribly, terribly difficult. There are some techniques that Lowengart relies on to give him the edge and to help him make a photograph that people will respond to. Attention is a very big word and I think very important to photography. I think they're there are two kinds. One is there's a graphic tension that you can apply as a photographer, and I often do. But I think within talking about a situation where somebody is having a photograph taken by you, so it's a known, not, you're not on the street, you're, you're in contact with the subject. And there, I think, keeping the social tension, the politeness, the um, host-guest, the um, whatever it is, past-bore relationship that you have, um, going, I think, is terribly important. I mean, you, you want to maybe come off this tension a little bit, but you want that tension there. Uh, you don't, you don't want to, I, I don't think you want to be absolutely friendly. Isaac, I'm going to switch cameras. Right. I'm going to work from this side. Anything you say, boy. Okay, fingers pointed together. That, those first fingers pointing up. No, no, just the first two fingers pointing upward. Yeah, straight up to the, to the sun, just the first two. That's it, that's it, that's it. Nice. I think that's about it for this. I'd like to try one other position Fine, which one? With, the, uh, with the buildings behind you. 
but facing me, so you won't be sunning it. It's anything. very hard to photograph, I think, members of the family. I think, for instance, with, which I like to do very much, but I think that when I photograph a, one of my children, for instance, it's very important. I've got to remember to do it professionally. In other words, I've got to do it in a kind of stranger uh, subject relationship uh, to get that tension and demand uh, going. Composition is the most important element in photography. I suppose another photographer might think that lighting was the most, light was the most important element in photography. So, and maybe it is, I mean, I don't know. But to me, composition has certainly been the question I've been most, devoted most of my uh, attention to. And the question is, how do you need to compose a picture to make it effective to a viewer? And uh, the point almost is, what can you get away with that uh, um, that the viewer will respond to this, but it isn't the traditional picture. Because in a way, I think you want the viewer to respond to this particular picture, not that it's a, an, a wonderful example of a lighthouse with a, with a tree branch in front of it and, you know, that kind of composition. I've been told that the Chinese, I don't know if this is true, have a, a, an interesting different view, which is that photographs should match the ideal photograph. Uh, rather than be original themselves. In other words, that you would legitimately uh, photograph a flower in a vase and the attempt would be to make this photograph of the flower in the vase approach the ideal photograph of the flower in the vase. And my feeling would be just entirely different. I'd, I'd want to make this photograph of the flower in the vase look unlike any other photograph of, of any other flower in any other vase. And really trying to find ways in which you can compose without any rules so that you're not using somebody else's solutions uh, but that each composition ideally is um, is uh, original to the to the subject but then in a very practical way when i started off photography i was working on a school newspaper i was sort of interested in newspapers and um, editorial use of photography and a great premium literally is is uh, deemed to be on the space that a photograph takes up and therefore one of the uh, criteria of successful editorial photography i think is is learning how to put everything in as small a space as possible if you don't need it don't put it in and i think it's a very good discipline and i like it too i think it's good in speech i think it's good in photography and, and so that's been a, a, a dominant uh, question as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I would really be trying always to leave things out. We'll be back with some of John Lowengard's most memorable photographs and the stories behind them when World of Photography continues.